Well, the world's fully underway. Fly Mart last night. Oh, what excitement the putting was. If you haven't watched the Fly Mart piece, it is something special. Back to golf. What a beautiful day we're going to have today, Liz. Oh, yeah. You know, slightly breezy, sun's out. There's plenty of shade here to keep you cool, especially when you get down into the valley. It's a great, it's going to be a great day. Well, these guys are competing all week long at six different courses. Here's a look at Churchville one of the courses of the 2011 Am World Championships in Rochester, New York. Welcome to Churchville Park Disc Golf Course. This is an open course predominantly, and the wind will decide how the players play. If the wind is up, they'll just try to hold on. If the wind is down, they could attack this course. Let's take a look at Churchville, part of the 2011 Rochester Am Worlds. Well, this is hole number one, 450 feet. They're calling it a par three. This is a demanding hole. Not only do you have these several trees run down the right side to manipulate off of the tee box, but OB is abundant on this hole, running all the way down the left side in the bailout area and within 10 feet of the basket. You can bail out left or long and find yourself OB. Hole number five, 271 feet. The ceiling will decide exactly how these guys go at this hole. There's a small gap down the left side for an Anheuser or possibly a sidearm. The big arms may try to go up and over, but a roller is a good option on this hole. The road along the right side and behind the basket is OB. Hole number seven, another demanding hole, 479 feet, par four. The OB starts right at the tee box and all the way down past the green. A lot of the players may bail out left as this row of trees, a more direct line is highly dangerous. If you do bail out left, then you're looking at a wonderful open shot, but the OB line is within three paces of the basket and you can see it is well guarded. So it may be better to go straight, but I believe most players will bail out left and attempt this shot to try to get up and down for their birdie. Hole number nine, 278 foot par three. Another well guarded green. You'll need to manipulate the first tree with a skinny hyzer leading into even a more small window coming in from the right to left side. If you try and go out to the left side with either a sidearm or a big left handed hyzer it is more accessible but the road down the left side is OB. This is hole number nine, the end of the front side at Churchville. Hole number 11, a 262 foot par three. Alleys to choose from. Left, straight at the basket, a little small hyzer line or a big booming hyzer line. The guys will be looking at this as it is a dangerous shot if you get past the trees with that road directly behind the basket being OB. Hole number 13, 377 foot par three. Another demanding tee shot. The basket finishes hard left, but there is no way to get there in a direct line. You're gonna have to attriculate through the thick pines and hopefully end up with an opportunity from a long birdie putt. Hole number 13 is also going along the turnout where that road, again, is OB. Hole number 15, a 485 foot par four. Demanding tee shot out of a tunnel into an open field. Then you're gonna have a second shot leading down to an elevated basket guarded by a huge oak tree. The road coming in from the right side is OB and this is a runaway green.
Hole number 18, the finishing hole, 354 foot par three. A direct line is available, but there's a hyzer line as well as an anhyzer line. The green opens up once you get past the first row of trees, and this is definitely a beautiful green. The four holes on this side of the road are new additions to this particular course here in Churchville. Well, that's beautiful Churchville, one of your 2011 world's courses in Rochester, New York. Well, Churchville, another beautiful piece of property here in Rochester, New York. Well, right now, I think we're gonna go catch up with the junior division of the females, and I believe they're playing at Ellison Park. They are. Here's the FJ one, two, and fours from Ellison Park, second day action. Well, we are at beautiful Ellison Park here in Rochester, New York. And this is the juniors, the female juniors. We've got the uh, FJ1, FJ2, and FJ4, I believe, in this group. Yep, that's right, Billy. On the pad right now, I believe, is Brianna Vogel. And now she's the most experienced player here. She's in the 19 and under division. And this is her 25th career tournament. Awesome. This is hole number three at Ellison, 274 feet downhill. And here's Mackenzie Eckeberger. Oh yeah, I tell you, she takes no time. She is confident up there, but. And McKenzie's in the FJ3, which is 13 and under. Yeah, oh, and look at this bit. here. This is the future for sure. This is Lacey Brugler. Oh, that's right. And now her and Brianna are actually sisters. Oh, and look at Lacey. She's throwing a beautiful shot. I tell you, Lacey, this is going to be her seventh, her eighth tournament of this year, and she started this year, and she's under 10. Wow, that is awesome. We're going to let them come down to us. This is the F, the female juniors, in the second day here, beautiful Ellison Park. Okay, it looks like Lacey Brugler out of Upper Sandusky is out. Big sister coming over, pointing out the basket for her. Oh, finds a little bit of trouble with the obstacle in between her and the basket. That's all right, she's gonna be able to get up and down from there. Nice, so we've got some family going on here. And, and as we all know, this is a big family sport. And this is one of my favorite divisions. We showed the men's juniors yesterday. This is the females juniors. And I believe Mackenzie Eckeberger could be out here. Oh, uh, yep, they're communicating, I think. Well, Brianna says, uh, okay, I believe Brianna may be out now. Yeah, it looks like Brianna's lining up her shot. I don't think she's actually out, but that's how they worked it out. Oh, and, and they're both satisfied. All right, she puts it up in the air. That's going to be a tricky putt, not easy, but inside the circle. Well, now over to the right, you can see Mackenzie. She's going to mark hers. She's just next to that beautiful pine there. And she's somewhere in the neighborhood of 85 to 100 feet away. Oh, yeah. She's not going to take any time. She also participated in the doubles, champ doubles competition with Drew Mosley. Oh, she gave it plenty of room. Oh, oh, also found trouble with the large tree guarding the green. We'll let them come to us. This, one of the funnest groups out here. We have 450 plus players competing this week in the amateur and junior world championships. This is the junior world championships. We've been focusing on that in the first couple of days, but tomorrow we'll carry our focus over to the men in the advanced division. But right now, Mackenzie Eckerberger looking up, and this would be a huge pop for her. This is well outside the circle. Oh yeah, this, this would be, um, I know she wants it. All right, she definitely takes her time. Good player. It's up in the air. Oh, Billy, that was close. That was right on line. Maybe just a little bit more speed. What a great run. Now here's Lacey. Oh, Lacey's gonna unpocket her mini. Oh, absolutely. All right, she looks confident, Billy. Again, another long putt. Oh, and she puts it on up. She makes a good bid for it, too. Just as good, and there's big sis to pick her up and tell her great effort. Oh, yeah. All right, Brianna Vogel. She knows she has the ability to make this putt. I've seen her make longer than this. Yeah, the 19 and under. Oh yeah, look at the other girls. They look up to her for sure. Oh, great putt by Brianna Vogel. And All that's right. why, that was a solid bid. Mackenzie gonna move in now and Lacey proud of big sis. Oh, absolutely. 
This is the second day of competition here in Rochester, New York. This is a 2011 amateur, and as you can see, Junior World Championships. Great pop, Brianna. Thanks. Well, here we are at beautiful Palmer Park, and we're with the lead card leads of the Advanced Masters. Yeah, Rick, Rick, Rick Hart is on that pad right now. He's in the lead. After two rounds, he was seven under. Well, that's a solid start. This is hole number nine, 242 feet, and what a visual beauty this is. Oh, yeah, this is downhill. I'd say the elevation drops 20 to 30 feet. Well, you see that orange line. They want to clear that. There is no OB long. Oh, he hit the tree on the inbounds, though, so I believe he's going to be able to take his life from the other side. Now, he's not thinking about that. He is OB. All right, next on the pad is Jeffrey Perigo. Now, Jeffrey shot six down through the first two rounds, so he and Rick are already in that battle. And this is one of those shots you just want to get it up over that little man-made object, the rock wall there. Well, not even that. They can play safe and just, it's the second day of Worlds. I like that one, Liz. Oh, he likes it too. He keeps it inside the circle. Yeah, Beautiful. That might have been a putter. It looked like that really slowed down and stopped well. All right, now the only thousand rated player out of this group, Heath Whiteley. He's sitting third on the tee pad right now. Again, this shot, you know, players are thrown anywhere from an understable mid-range to maybe even a putter drop shot. If you have a forehand, you could maybe land it on the green. Well, it's playing every bit of 200 feet. The problem is, is you only want to throw it about 205. If you throw it 200, you could end up OB. That's trouble. That's a little early. Oh, oh made it through the line of trees him. there. You know, these players, they can go further than the basket. It's not OB behind there. This is Tim McCauley on the tee. He is ready. He's still got two discs in his hand. and Oh, he's going to throw. He's one of those guys, and All that's right. nothing. Oh, that's trouble, Oh, Liz. he's got to get up fast. Oh, safe and probably the best shot of the group, Bill. From trouble to part, a great opportunity for Tim to get a birdie. They're going to make their way down to this beautiful little green. We'll follow them. This is hole number nine at Parma Park. All oh. right, we've made it down to the green on hole number nine, following the lead group of the Am Masters. Rick Ricard is out. He and he also went OB. This is for a circle three, Billy. Oh, trying to minimize the damage. He's not gonna. Well, that was a good looking bid, but that's gonna cost him a four, and that is not what he was looking for. He was in the lead, but this is such a marathon, you know, and there's so many ups and downs. All right, Heath Whiteley made it onto the green, but he's got a funny looking pot. This basket is, I don't know, there's five trees within 15 feet of the basket. Easily. This is exactly why you have to have a straddle pot. Oh, Johnny McRae's right. Oh, that was a good bid. He had the right angle, just a little bit higher, maybe a little bit harder. All right, as the players decide who's out next. Looks like Tim's coming in. It's either yeah. going to be Tim or Jeff. And now it's Tim. Tim's down on his knee here. Going to increase the difficulty level of this putt. Not necessarily, Billy. Getting down on that knee opens up his window. Not a girl. All right, Jeffrey, after being really excited about almost acing this for us, let's see if he can finish out with his two. Oh, oh. that's just butt eye, and there was nothing ever wrong with that shot. He was parking it. We're going to let these guys tap out. This is the lead card of the Masters. We're going to follow him to the next hole right up the hill here to beautiful number 10. Thanks. Well, here we are, hole number 10. This is just one sweet hole. 213 feet down the valley, right across. Yeah, down the valley and back up the valley. This is a hilltop to hilltop. There are a couple birdies on the card. Well, we've got Jeffrey hole. right now. Jeff Perigo should be on the tee. He and Tim McCauley birdied that, I believe. Yes, sir. It's getting lined up now. Again, this is a beautiful hole. There's trouble to the left and to the right. It's not an easy shot. It's a short shot, but you have to keep it in the middle. Oh, that's trouble, Liz. Oh, he ricocheted hard into the woods. Oh, and he said he loved the camera. 
That's his first bad shot in right. his career on the camera. Well, let's see if his birdie buddy Tim McCall can keep it at least in the middle here. Again, only about 213 straight across. You can see the valley down and up. And now Jeff's going to have a tough three. Oh, that's tight again. Oh, he got knocked down early. Not what you're looking for. You want to push this thing out a little wide. And that's a fair gap there, Liz. These guys could be a little nervous as the camera has rolled up on them. Heath Whiteley on the team now. This is the Advanced Masters lead card. Second day, and I like this oh, one, Oh, it's right down the middle, and it's flipping over just as it needs to. Ooh, he almost hit the pole. Beautiful shot there. He's going to have about a 14, maybe 15-footer for his birdie. All right, the leader after the first two rounds, Rick Ricard. He's last on the pad now, carding a bogey on the last hole after going OB and missing an opportunity to save his three. Well, we'll get a chance to see what he's made of now, looking to oh, bounce right back. he steps right up back. with a sidearm. Well, I'm liking it, That's Liz. a safe shot, Billy. That's safely perfect. close to the bucket as Rick gets it in there. We've got two guys in trouble, two guys parked on the green. We'll do our best to bring it to you as they're going to head off down in the valley and into the jungle on the right. Well, he is at the very bottom of the hill. And he seemed to navigate it up there pretty good. He did get into some trouble along the left side of the green. He threw that right at me, Liz. <laughs> he sure did. I don't know how you could be any less of a target in that big red shirt. Oh, thank you, Liz. <laughs> now Jeff's gonna move in right now as Jeff, uh, his first bad shot on camera said he had an opportunity to throw in front of Barry and I last year. All right, he's just informed us that he's gonna throw an Anheuser near us, so. We're gonna take a step back. All right, Jeff Perigo, he, I think he might have changed his mind. He's looking at a forehand line now. Yeah, once he got in there, he saw a hole that was an open window. Oh. And he's going to have a knot on his head as he has just bumped it trying to walk through that door. And that yeah. is not what he wants, especially at this point of the match. These guys are coming into the back nine. They started on hole one, and they're going to be fighting all week long. Oh, absolutely. Jeff Perigo looks to be out again after coming into close contact with the tree not too far in front of him. I know that I'd be thinking right now, I just got a birdie and I'm about to give it back. Yeah, this is that tough part because, you know, right now he's he's got a look. He could do something crazy, maybe try to run for it. He's not careful, he could cost himself another stroke. Yep, I think he's going to play safe here, Billy. It is uphill. And Smart play by Jeff Perigo. He's going to take his pill, keep it a small one. All right, Tim McCall. He definitely has a chance for a birdie. Not an easy shot, but he's up there. Actually, Liz, this will be for so par. par. Absolutely. And he's happy to get that par as he's going to move on out. Look at there, Jeff right in the middle of his defunct goes over to give him a little love, knocks his putter down. You can see he's trying to transfer what he's got right over to Tim. Oh, yeah, he sure is. These old school guys, they know about working another guy gently. All right, this is Heath Wiley stepping up to his chance to make his putt. Now this is for a bird as he almost hit the lock as he went by. Well, pretty routine putt for him. That is how you want to do it. He's two down through the last two, and that's exactly what you plan when you're sitting in the hotel room at night looking at these cards on paper. All right, as they finish it up here, this is the AM Masters group. Well, Rick, trying to get the stroke back he gave away before, see if he, he can have the lead. If you want to check the scores, you go to the front page right there, and you can click on the score page. These guys got live scoring and all results there. That's Rick Reichard getting the stroke back he gave away. That's the Advanced Masters on the second day. At the 2011 PGA Amateur and Junior Disc Golf World Championships. I tell you, those guys are a joy to watch. Oh, you know, they're just, every girl out there is so into this sport and they've been playing a long time and they're, I think they're gonna stick around. Well, our sponsors, huge. The reason you guys get to enjoy all this coverage, Voodoo Disc Golf Bags has got some unbelievable dyed disc. I mean, those things are hot, Liz. Oh yeah, they're using something called Tattoo Technology. The designs are intricate, they are very solid. I can't wait to see them out on the field. Well, all you've got to do, you might not believe it, but Billy and Clash, 
We are on Facebook now. That's right, everybody. All you have to do is find the Clash DVD page and fan us. Everyone that fans us has a chance to win one of these special Voodoo discs. Oh, they are really cool. Now, we've been letting you see some of these guys all week long. Here's a special segment. Here's the Clash. Meet the players at the 2011 AM World Championships. Hi, my name is Brianna Vogel. I'm from Ohio. Uh, my PDJ number is 41101. And give a shout out to this villa. Hi, my name is Lacey Burglar. My PDJ number is 41758. I'm from. I'm from Ohio. I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to Dissilla. Steve Steele from uh, Eastern Shore, Virginia. PGA number is 33338. Earnhardt number. Uh, Kevin Tritt in Charlotte, North Carolina, 28445. Tell everybody we're looking forward to seeing you guys next year. Jeff Bond from Freeland, Michigan, uh, number 28822. Thanks, Craig, for the cart. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Hello, my name is Bill Newman, PDGA 1603. I'm working here as a PDGA Marshal at the AM and Junior Worlds. Come see me at FDR Park in Yorktown, New York. So we'll see you guys. Thank right. you, brother. Yeah. Mike Buchanan from Nelsonville, Ohio, PDJ number 34846. My name is Bill Keith from Medina, Ohio. Number is 44231. Uh, I say shout out to all my buddies in Medina. Uh, John Burke from West Windsor, New Jersey, 13399, Bucks County Disc Golf Alliance. Thank you, man. Mickey Welling, Rochester, New York, 27732. That's it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Elliot Hicks. From St. Joseph, Missouri, PDGA number 33394. PK Diener from Cleveland, Ohio, 17076. Dwayne Berjek, PGA number 32121, Brantford, Ontario, Canada. Thank you. Mike Francisco, Danville, Virginia, 37478, Danville Disc Golf Association. Tattoo Steve Drew, 32423, Kansas City Flying Disc Club. Hoorah. Yeah. All right, thanks, buddy. That's so where I get the nickname. <laughs> you go first. Uh, good day, I'm Kingsley Flett from uh, Australia, PDGA 46727, and good day to all the blokes in Perth. And I'm uh, Rod Norton from Jackson, Tennessee, originally from Buffalo, and uh, PDGA 43010. Thank you. <laughs> Why my would you have an attitude like that? Well, my mom should be here quick to pick me up, I think. <laughs> I'm, uh... Are you a beginner or something? Well, yeah, my third year beginning. <laughs> Not very happy about this tournament, really anything. Okay, well give us your uh, inf vital information. Uh, vital information, Mark Alton here. Uh, very disappointed to be here. Uh, Rochester, um, where is it, New York? Yeah, well, we try our best to uh, do the best we can. Uh, PDGA number here, uh, what's my number, Nathaniel? You got my disc? 48744. Um, should be excited to be here right now. And I'm not. I'm really uh, kind of demoralized. Play with a really good group of guys. You know, we're missing any pots, and uh, that's all I'm doing really. I'm missing all my shots, my mid range, my putts, my drives are out of bounds. So, kind of tired of this. And um, punch line, punch line. Hey, uh, grab a disc and throw it out of bounds for me. Mark Alton, thanks a lot. Well, one of my favorite things to do meet a new human being. We just introduced you guys to several. <laughs> Whew, some of them guys are special. Yeah, and you know, they represent every area of this country and the world, Billy. This is the World Championships. Well, now we want to get you back out to some live action. This is the second day's action, and we're going to go out and see the Masters Women's. That's right, we're going to Churchville Park.
All right, welcome back. We're on hole number five now with the Masters women in the advanced field. Well, this is 260 feet, and it's a little dangerous. I mean, that road right is OB all the way to the bucket. And as you can see, if you've got a roller, that is a preferred line. The trees and the ceiling are demanding. Oh, yeah, and it's guarded. It looks like it's guarded along the left side with a, a large fence as well. Well, that's the edge of the tennis course. It shouldn't be in play, but you never know. This is the Advanced Masters Women. This is the second day of competition at the 2011 Amateur Worlds. And we're looking at a beautiful hole here in Churchville. Well, they've got to deal with this ceiling. There's no doubt. And, you know, the roller looks real inviting, but that road over there with a little bit of wind, you could go will be really quick. Oh yeah, and you know, any if you hit any of the guarding that left side, it can you can go one of two ways. You're gonna go inbounds or out of bounds. Now Dawn now ready. This is a 260 footer. Looks like she's gonna get to throw the S shot here. And she's challenged the ceiling and the ceiling has won. And that's the problem there. She had a great line towards the hole, but you know, it may take away her birdie opportunity, but she can still easily get a par out of this. Sherry Jesenbach is on the pad now. Well, and you know, I, I like a roller, push roller, backhand roller, but there is enough wind out here to take a roller out of my game. I'm not sure that a roller idea at this point in time. You're just gonna have to force this ceiling to be dealt with a ceiling, see if they can't land under it. All right, I think maybe she is thinking that the same same thoughts you just said, Billy, making a diselection at the very last. Well, you know, I found that these times, if you if you club down what we call. If you had a mid-range, maybe take a oh. sharp edge and try to just penetrate she through. Well. She's going to end up almost in the same spot as the other shot. And again, it, it's an easy way to play it for a three. All right, this is Alfreda Everlate. And she might just lay down a roller, Billy. I know she did the last time we saw her. Well, she's going to put the sidearm up. I think, oh, oh and that's shot. plenty. That's got some good distance. All right, she almost got herself inside of the circle. She's a good six, eight feet outside the circle looking right at the basket. All right, Naomi beer kiss up on the pad now. She's gonna take advantage of the wide open space along that left side of the fairway. Didn't catch the air. Three of the girls landing in the same spot. Elfride crushing them a good 30, 40 feet past them. We'll move on down now here. Hole number five at Churchville, Wednesday morning. All right, Dawn Osborne found a little bit of trouble. She is the furthest out, but not that much, not that far out. Well, she's still got a small tree right there in front of her that she's got to deal with. You know, she takes that hyzer line. She's got. It almost still looks like she's going to line up the low hyzer. Oh, she just oh, she found a gap. Beautiful shot. She's up there about 18 feet away, but that's a tester in this wind today. You know, these Masters women are known for being incredible putters, and I tell you what, every putt I've seen so far, they're looking pretty good. Well, Naomi looking at it. And she is absolutely enjoying herself. It's a girl's week out for her and Paige. Oh yeah, they're, <laughs> oh, oh, caught a little bit of trouble and she's resting on the line of the circle. Well, there is the ceiling that we're talking about taking full effect, Liz. And this is just a beautiful little park in a quaint little town. Oh, Sherry Jazenbeck, a great shot. She was underneath <sighs> the tree. What a roll away. She goes from a 10 footer to about a 20 footer and that's a tester. Oh, you know, what What happened there? Was it the wind? All right, Alfred A. Epperly. She's the furthest out. She's oh, about mm, six feet out of the circle. Somewhere in that area. And she's you know, the wind just picked up though. Well, it always does when you step up behind that pot. It's up in the air. Oh, another good bid by Alfred A. Epperly. She, she's all over that metal today. She just drew on the left side. Now, Naomi. This is a big putt for the par. This is definitely right on the circle's edge. Oh, again, hits the cage. Can't keep it in the chains. All Dawn right, Don. Yep, she gets to go from about halfway inside the circle. Now, Dawn. Looks like she's looking at a dead headwind, too. Not that strong, but strong enough to maybe just play with your mental game. Well, she's really not out, but she didn't want to interrupt her girlfriend over there enjoying some time with her other friends. And that's one of the things about Masters players. They're out here enjoying the day. Not a problem. No effect, no negative karma for putting out a turn because she was doing something nice there. Not at all. All right, Sherry Jasenbeck. 
No time wasted at all. Oh. Uh oh. It, all right. Well, again, this poor lady is going to suffer from a rollaway. She's got to teach that thing to sit, Liz. Yeah. Let's see if she can get it. Oh, again, just touches, touches all over the metal basket and won't stick in the bucket. From par to double, and those never feel good. Going to make her lunch taste bad, but she's got another four holes. She'll be able to bounce right back. This is Churchfield Tuesday morning, and this is the Advanced Masters Women PDGA World Championships. Elfrey Day with a solid par. All right, Sherry. Shake it off and move on to the next one. Now she gives the basket a little love as she moves on. Well, there you have the advanced division of the female masters. What a great group of girls. And we were lucky enough to get there just in time to get our on cloud nine moment. Here's the lead card after their second round competition at Churchville. All right, this is the Cloud9 post-round interview. I'm standing here with the lead card as they come off of green number 18 at Churchville Park in for the 2011 Amateur Worlds. Michelle Frazier and Melinda Apton at the completion of this round are still tied. However, Anya, who was tied at the beginning of the round, suffered a little bit of trouble. Um, can you tell us how what, what happened out there? Did, did you find some trouble on the tee, at the green? Um, well, actually, uh, I played really well starting starting the round, and I just found some trouble towards the end of the round. I, I grounded a couple of my drives, so um, that's that's all that really happened. It was it was just those couple of drives, then it was it was hard to catch up and, and get back out out of that trouble. So well, that's I, all that was. It was very simple. So I, I'm sure I can fix it, and hopefully I can play with these ladies again. Oh, absolutely! And now you're only four strokes back of them, and you guys are tied that round, shooting 61s apiece. Mm -hmm. How'd it feel out there? Was it a battle? Were you grinding? Were you having fun? Well, I was having fun <laughs> until I got to the basket, mostly. Oh, no. <laughs> Funning is always a challenge. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I had a blast. These ladies are great to play with. And what did you guys think of the course? Is it something that you'd want to play again, or you'd recommend it to your friends? It's kind of boring, but it's nice. It's really pretty. Yeah, well, very, you guys had great weather of, for it. Right. It was a beautiful day, though, and great people to play with. Yeah, so. definitely. Awesome card. I had a really blast and it's my first time on the lead card in the world. So I was just ecstatic to be there. Awesome. Well, hopefully you can retain that spot. We have Anya Nepinski, Melinda Apton and Michelle Frazier. Well, you can see those guys are on cloud nine. I'd be on cloud nine if I got to play in a world comp competition with weather like this. Oh, that's right, Billy. Those three girls are happy to be where they're at. Well, that is day two, the PDGA Daily Report. Tomorrow, tomorrow is something special for sure. We've been showing you a little bit of everything all week long. We're going after that A pool tomorrow. Top card, Liz. That's right. I know these guys, they're filtering out and seeing who is the best of the best. And tomorrow, we're going to start to see some of that action. Well, be sure to stay tuned to the PDGA.com. Don't forget now, go right above the videos to where the blue bar is. All you got to do is click the social media page. You can go in, you can see all the videos we're doing, all the blogs, all the tweets. There is a lot of angles being covered at this event. And the PDGA.com is exactly where you want to be. I'm Billy Crump for Liz Carr and Clash DVD. We'll be here all week long till the last putt drops.